Given the significant developments of international criminal justice in the last few decades, due to the creation of several international criminal tribunals, like the International Criminal Court, or ICC, that you can see just behind me, the prosecution of authors of war crimes is often considered to be the most effective judicial means of enforcing IHL and sanctioning its violations. In other words, the accent is nowadays put on the responsibility of individuals for violations of IHL amounting to war crimes, that is, individual criminal responsibility. However, one should not forget the traditional way of enforcing international obligations between states through state responsibility. So the two types of responsibility, state responsibility and individual criminal responsibility, must be clearly distinguished, even if they are somewhat interconnected. Firstly, individual criminal responsibility deals with the responsibility of individual persons, and the consequences of responsibility are criminal sanctions. Criminal sanctions generally consist in deprivation of liberty. Individual criminal responsibility is established by criminal courts, including, at the international level, by the ICC. In addition, as you will see in detail later, in particular concerning IHL, not all violations of that law may give rise to individual criminal responsibility, but only those which amount to war crimes. In other words, only serious IHL violations may be considered as a crime under international law. State responsibility, by contrast, concerns the responsibility of states and resembles civil or tort responsibility in national law. The main consequence is cessation of the unlawful conduct and reparations for injuries suffered, not criminal sanctions. The notion of international criminal responsibility of states does not exist. State responsibility is not established by criminal courts, but by institutions such as the International Court of Justice that you can see behind me. In addition, concerning IHL, state responsibility is not limited to some serious IHL violations, but potentially can cover any violation of IHL norms. Secondly, state responsibility and individual criminal responsibility are regulated by two different legal regimes, composed of different rules. The result is that the two types of responsibility are independent from each other. One does not imply the other. Just because an individual who is acting on behalf of a state is guilty of war crime does not automatically entail the responsibility of that state for violations of IHL under the law of state responsibility. The reverse is also true. It is perfectly possible that a state be held internationally responsible for a serious violation of IHL without the concrete author of that violation being considered as criminally responsible for such violation, even if that author is acting on behalf of the state. That being said, one type of responsibility may have certain effects on the other type of responsibility. One of the most important areas of overlap concerns the establishment of facts. The facts established by the criminal court may be crucial for the court ruling on state responsibility, especially since that court is often deprived of the effective means to collect evidence. It is in that sense that, in the case concerning the application of the Genocide Convention to the war in the former Yugoslavia, the International Court of Justice ruled that it could rely on evidence established by the ICTY. As emphasized by the court itself, the aforesaid case indeed had an unusual feature. 
many of the allegations before it had already been the subject of the processes and decisions of the ACTY. The court concluded in that regard that it should in principle accept as highly persuasive relevant findings of facts made by the tribunal at trial, unless, of course, they have been upset on appeal. For the same reasons, any evaluation by the tribunal based on the facts as so found, for instance, about the existence of the required intent, is also entitled to due weight.